My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss the theory behind the nitrate reductase test. In this figure here on the top, we see some components of the nitrogen cycle on Earth. Specifically, the nitrate reductase test is looking at a component of denitrification, which is shown here on the upper right. In the process of denitrification, nitrate can be converted to nitrogen gas, which diffuses into the atmosphere. In fact, the atmosphere that we breathe is actually about 70% nitrogen gas. And this is actually accomplished in part by denitrifying bacteria. Here's the general reaction scheme to go from nitrate to nitrogen gas. We start with nitrate. An enzyme called nitrate reductase converts nitrate into nitrite. Now, be sure to distinguish for yourself the difference between nitrate and nitrite. Nitrate is NO3 minus. Nitrite is NO2 minus. Nitrate reductase converts nitrate to nitrite. And then we can actually have another enzyme which we are not testing for called nitrite reductase. And nitrite reductase can convert nitrite into nitrogen gas and sometimes, in some cases, ammonia. Okay? But we are specifically wanting to determine whether or not nitrate reductase is being expressed. Be sure to pay close attention to this video because this procedure can actually be a little bit confusing because as we'll see in a couple of minutes, we're actually going to have to use a flow chart. And it's very important to understand exactly what's happening at each step so you can be able to interpret your result. Let's talk about how this is done. When we do a nitrate reductase test, we're going to add two solutions designated A and B. Solution A contains a molecule called sulfonylic acid, and solution B contains a molecule called alpha naphthalamine. The basic principle is if we express only the enzyme nitrate reductase, only that enzyme, nitrate will be converted to nitrite. Also present here is nitrate broth. The principle behind the nitrate reductase test is assuming the bacteria only express nitrate reductase, meaning they only express this first enzyme and not the second one over here. Then nitrate will be converted to nitrite by the nitrate reductase, and no further enzymatic transformations will occur, meaning we will have a buildup of nitrite. It turns out that nitrite can react with both sulfonylic acid and alpha naphthalamine, and ultimately what will happen is this red dye will be formed. Therefore, if we only express the enzyme nitrate reductase, and that's the only one of the two that we express, then we will see a red color. We'll look at what the results look like in just a minute. So let's kind of go to a flow chart here. So we're going to assume we have the nitrate broth incubated with the bacteria. When we add sulfonylic acid and alpha naphthalamine, if we immediately get a red color change, so it turns red, then those bacteria are positive for nitrate reductase. Now, let me pose a question to you. Suppose for one minute that the bacteria express both nitrate reductase and nitrite reductase, both of these enzymes. Nitrate will first be converted to nitrite. However, what's different here is that the nitrite will then be converted to nitrogen gas. Therefore, if both of these two enzymes are expressed, we actually will not have a buildup of nitrite. That's because any nitrite formed from nitrate reductase will be further reduced by nitrite reductase into nitrogen gas. Therefore, if we express both of these enzymes, we won't observe an initial red color change. However, that does not necessarily mean that we don't express nitrate reductase. Let's look at the flow chart again. So, assuming we have the nitrate broth, we incubate, we add sulfonylic acid and alpha naphthalamine, we get no color change. We basically have one of two choices. Either we don't express either of these enzymes, so none of them are expressed, therefore we would have no nitrite because there's no conversion of nitrate to nitrite. Or the other case is we express both these enzymes. In that case, we still would have no nitrite because it would all be converted to nitrogen gas. So how do we distinguish between whether or not the bacteria express both of these enzymes or none of them? 
what we're actually going to do is add zinc dust, powdered zinc. So here's how we do this. Recall that the key to the red color change initially is the presence of nitrite. However, if the solution does not change colors, like we said, it could either have both nitrate reductase and nitrite reductase, or the other case is it has neither of those enzymes, meaning no nitrate reductase. How do we differentiate between the two cases? Well, we add powdered zinc or zinc dust, and the zinc is actually able to react with residual nitrate. Why would we have residual nitrate? Well, think about it. If we had residual nitrate, that means we didn't have nitrate reductase, because if we had this enzyme, it would have been converted to something else. But if we have nitrate, the zinc will react with the nitrate to produce nitrite, and then the nitrite will react with the sulfonylic acid and alpha naphthalamine, and then we'll see that red dye, and we'll see a red color change. So, if we initially see no color change after we add the sulfonylic acid and alpha naphthalamine, we can then add zinc dust. And if we see a red color, that red color means that the zinc reacted with nitrate present, meaning that bacteria does not have nitrate reductase. And so a red result in this case is negative for nitrate reductase. Be sure you can follow this flowchart. However, if we add the zinc and there's no color change, what does that mean? Well, that means that we didn't form any nitrite with the addition of the zinc. That means that both of these enzymes were produced by the bacteria. The nitrate was converted to nitrite, and then the nitrite was converted to nitrogen gas. Iron does not react with that, and so there's no red color change. So, if we add the zinc dust after no initial color change, and we still don't see a color change, then this is a positive result for nitrate reductase. In fact, this actually means that both enzymes were produced, nitrate reductase and nitrite reductase. Okay? Let's very quickly look at some of the results. Sometimes they may not appear exactly red, maybe like a very dark orange, but it's definitely different than a clear result or a no color change after everything you do. If you run through this entire flow chart, and at the very end, you get no color change, like you see here, so stayed colorless after zinc, that means that this particular bacteria, which is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, this is actually positive for nitrate reductase. In fact, this bacteria would actually have both nitrate reductase and nitrite reductase because it stayed colorless after the addition of zinc. We look at some others. These two right here, this is E. coli and this is Staphylococcus epidermidis. These two apparently turned red after the additions of, they call them N1 and N2, that's actually solutions A and B they actually turned red directly after that. What does that mean? Well, if we add these two solutions and we initially get a red color change, that means these are positive for nitrate reductase, but they only have nitrate reductase, at least these two in the middle. This one on the left, Streptococcus pneumoniae, turned red after addition of zinc. So that means initially we had no color change, we added the powder zinc, and then we get a red color change. That means this particular bacteria Streptococcus pneumoniae was negative for nitrate reductase. In fact, what this means is that it didn't have any of those enzymes and still had residual nitrate. Okay? So one of the keys with this test is to be able to actually follow these flow charts. And there actually should be one in your lab manual. Let's do a quick rehash of all of this material right here. We add solutions A and B, sulfonylic acid and alpha naphthalamine. If we initially get a red color change, positive for nitrate reductase. If initially we get no color change, then we have to do one more thing. We have to add zinc dust to differentiate the two cases. Either it expresses both of these enzymes or neither of them. When we add zinc dust, if we get no color change still, that means it's positive for nitrate reductase. If we add zinc and get a red color change then, that red color change is negative for nitrate reductase. Hopefully this makes sense to you. We're going to look at this in more detail in the demonstration video.
go ahead and watch that as well. Thank you.